Thanks for clicking on Wayne.com to talk inside the zone. Along with me, as always, this season will be Justin Kenny of the New Sentinel talking high school football. And this is when it all truly begins, this Friday night, August 22nd, the first Friday night of high school football. Uh, last Friday we got some scrimmage action, and I don't know how much you can draw from that. What, what were your thoughts just in general before we start going over the week one matchups on um, things people learned maybe in the scrimmage games? A little bit. You know, Dwanger Lures, I think a lot of people were impressed with Lures' uh, offensive and defensive line play a lot better from last year. That was one of their primary problems of a year ago. They competed very well with Dwanger um, in both, in, on the, both offensive and defensive lines. So that is what jumped out to me from that scrimmage. Um, I think it was a real how is Lures is going to look, but like you said, it's, it's so tough to judge scrimmage week really what what teams have and you never know if it's ones going against twos right. what kind of situation they're in it's easier to score when you get the ball on the 20 or the 25 as opposed to the whole field so the, a lot of mystery i think wrapped yeah. in uh scrimmage games um but let's talk about the big game on the schedule really every year in week one since the sac shifted their schedule lures at snyder huge game off the docket what are going to be some of the biggest keys as the panthers this could be a big sac game as it always is as the panthers take on the knights yeah you know the hype last year was this was a game that could decide the sac and obviously that didn't work with with lures but um we mentioned it lures his lines looked a lot better last week against the winger how are they going to compete against snyder snyder has a uh, five senior offensive linemen uh they're going to be huge in the trenches going to be very skilled in the trenches uh, it's going to be an interesting game. I just really want to see how Lures can come out and compete, smash mouth football with Snyder, head to head, just see if they can match up with him at key positions. Lures throws a touchdown on the first play of the scr scrimmage against Wenger. You know, Chris Schwarzkopf wasn't happy about that on the other sideline. But if you're Lures, the feeling was that they got a little bit of their swag back. For sure. Um, with, as we mentioned last week, 19 starters returning as opposed to replacing 19 starters last year. Do you feel like they have some confidence as an underdog going in that maybe they didn't have last year when they had to replace so many guys? I think for sure. I think these guys have just been just counting their counting the days to August 22nd, just from last year once the season ended. They wanted to come back and really show that the, this was a one-year fluke. Lures is still going to be Bishop Lures this year. And that this first game against Snyder is going to be a real good indicator of where they're at. You mentioned the trenches. As far as skill positions go, Noah Wazinski looked pretty good in the scrimmage. We know that he's got two D1 offers out of Mac schools. Uh, Austin Mack is considered one of the best juniors. you got Jesse Bates defensively. So how does Lures' passing game specifically match up with what Snyder has defensively? Because Snyder seems to always replace great linemen, great linebackers, and now they've got a guy like Jesse Bates leading that secondary. Yeah, Jesse Bates, phenomenal player, commitment to Toledo. we got Jalen Fowler back there as well. It's going to be huge how they match up with Austin Mack, and I like Terrell Johnson, too, there in the slot for Lures. Had a long touchdown reception on Friday night against DeWanger. Those two guys I want to watch, and, and Lures can really uh, bring two, three running backs into the fold as well. They're really deep at that position, too. If they can develop a running game as well against Snyder early and make Snyder really respect that run, and if the line can block enough to get Wazinski time to throw deep, it's it can be a really uh, dynamic offense for Lures. Yeah, this has been 50-50 the last couple of years. I know Snyder's won the last two, but Lures won the two before that. So heading into this matchup, who do you think is the favorite? What do you think the final score might be on a Friday night? i got to take Snyder. I, th I, I have them number one in my SAC, and I think they come out and, and really show the rest of the area what Snyder's going to be. We, we talked about it. Everybody was losing, guys. Snyder brings plenty back. Especially offense, Colton Painter's back at quarterback. I want to see how wide, the wide receivers, young wide receivers for Snyder, guys like Malik Bramley, Devlin Williams, a senior basketball player who's back for the first time as a mm -hmm. freshman to play uh, offense for Snyder. So I just think there's, there's a lot of experience, a lot of talent back for Snyder on both sides of the ball. I think it's going to be closer than last year, 34-12 last year. I think it's a closer game. But at this point, I'm taking Snyder, but I, I, I'm playing both ways right here. I will not be surprised if Lures wins. Just like we mentioned, the swagger that they have. They're going to come in and be ready to play. If they can smash Snyder in the mouth early, early touchdown, or early turnover, that's going to be huge. Yeah, and I think C.J. McCarter physically as a back, just looking at him, impressive. He's a big dude. He would make the all-airport team dude. in Fort Wayne. Uh, I got a chance to see Neandre Billingsley in the scrimmage. Uh, he had some bounce to him. He's a good running back. Uh, I think the trenches will be interesting to see how if Lure's defensive line can get some pressure on Colton Painter and make sure those holes aren't big for those running backs to run in, it's going to make the game even more interesting. I would take Snyder as well because the Panthers, hey, until somebody proves that they can beat the Panthers, the Panthers are. Down, go with Snyder. Exactly. They are the team to beat right now, I think. Uh, also in the SAC, we'll talk about this just a little bit. South at Dwenger. Interesting as far as South, we don't know what to expect. Right. They have athletes. But Roosevelt Norfleet's back and uh, looking to put the bad taste of last year out of their mouths. 
No, the big thing in talking to Roosevelt Norfleet is his primary goal is to get his athletes in space with the ball. I think the last couple of years we've watched Southside and guys like Donovan Clark and just, you know, their offense they ran, they just weren't getting in space. You really wanted to see Donovan Clark on the edge or throw some, some quick screens out to him. Just get the ball in the hands of their athletes to make plays. I think that's what you're going to see Roosevelt Norfleet try to bring to that offense. He knows he's going to have offensive talent, guys you can run. Uh, so the key for Southside is get to that edge, get to the outside, Get the balls in our playmakers and, and let them run. We'll see what happens. I know you look at the records at the end of the season and think Dwanger would roll south, but really these have been closer games, I think, than we've given South credit for. Uh, last year, 24-14. The year before that, 20-7. to And the year before that, 24-6. to All Dwanger. Right. But they haven't exactly blown them out. And I've been there for a couple of those games where it takes Dwanger a while to get on the same page, maybe till the second half. And South hangs around. And part of that is South being able to be disruptive defensively. Yeah, for sure. It's... All, uh, the, the rivalry goes back to 2000, 13 straight wins for Dwinger since 2000. So they do have the series edge, but like you said, a lot of close games in there. Uh, you know, Dwinger's still mixing in. Uh, they had some, some, some scuffles a little bit in the, in the scrimmage, mm-hmm. uh, offensively trying to get going. I think they worked out some kinks there. It's going to be a similar offense to what we saw last year. You know, a lot of bootlegs running to the outside with Cody Miller. But that defense, I think, returns a lot. The, the linebacker core is back intact. I think that's going to be the difference. Is I really don't see South being able to move the ball very well in Dwinger. Yeah, they've got a new quarterback. They've got a lot, of, a lot of new parts as far as starters go. I think only three starters total back. So Roosevelt Northfleet has an uphill climb, but he seems like he's got the, the program headed in the right direction, at least early on. Uh, another SAC matchup, Concordia at Northside. These are teams that have really wholesale replacements on both sides of the football, maybe north side a little bit less than Concordia. Uh, but these games, uh, again, it was a tight one last year. I think 26-19 was the final. Yeah. So what do you see happening at Chambers Field on Friday night? I think it's, it's a case of two teams I try to identify their playmakers. Concordia lost 96% of their total offense at graduation, and David Morrison and John Poor. Who replaces that? I mean, is it going to be a, a quarterback and running back, or is it going to be a, a lot of different guys? Uh, that's the key. I think, you know, Northside's offense may sputter at first to try to get going with a lot of new faces. That defense is going to be tough. And we'll see if Concordia, with their new bodies, with their new faces, are able to put some offense together against Northside. And I'm really uh, interested to see Arian Nieves at quarterback, Keyshawn Watson at, at, at running back for, for, for Northside. Uh, a sophomore quarterback, a freshman running back, we'll see if they can make an impact early. Well, the last time Northside started a sophomore quarterback was the C.J. Jackson that era. That went pretty well. And they? that went pretty well that year, and from there on out, they've taken yeah. that next step as far as the SAC goes. Um, also, you take a look at, uh, I got a chance to see Concordia against East Noble for a little bit in the scrimmage. One thing that did concern me about Concordia against East Noble, we know that East Noble's got tough guys in the trenches, but they had some trouble containing them and getting protection, whether it's Morrison or Sparks at quarterback. Uh, and we know Ryan Hall is a defense guy first. The offense gets a lot of headlines, but you know they'll be ready on the defensive line. I think that line play, Concordia's offensive line versus Northside's defensive line and linebacker, I think that's going to be huge on Friday night. Yeah, for sure. And Northside's defense is so tough to game plan against because they have so much pre-snap movement. Moving around, guys, those linebackers are moving all over the place, calling out stunts, calling out blitzes. So with a lot of new guys for Concordia, it could be tough. The first week you're dealing with a defense that is going to come at you at all angles. Uh, so it's going to be a difficult challenge for Concordia. 